Now I will move your controller by the power of my will alone. Hello, this is Ollie from Reset Button, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at haptic feedback in video games, specifically controller rumble and what it can add to the experience. So stick around to see how the cookie rumbles. It's, it's like cookie crumbles, but I've changed it to... Please genuinely stick around. So to kick this off, let's head back in time and take a look at some of the earliest implementations of rumble. Fonz, probably more widely known as Motocross, is an old-school Sega arcade game featuring a first taste of what haptic feedback can add to a game. It seems pretty reserved comparing to now, but utilising rumble to better communicate collision with other vehicles is a stepping stone to one of the most valuable aspects the technology has brought to the genre, a heightened awareness of mistakes and player damage. So just jumping ahead a bit, and Nintendo has set its sights on bringing this technology to the living room, packing its three-dimensional Star Fox debut with the Rumble Pack. This is the Rumble Pack. The big reason why Star Fox 64 is the coolest cinematic gaming experience there is. It's designed with a force feedback device that lets players feel the game. The Rumble Pack lets you feel different degrees of vibration, like when you turbo boost or you shoot a bomb. The Rumble Pack feeds back a slight turbulent vibration. Boom! I actually felt it. Granted, it looks like a Frankenstein's monster, but it still marks an important point in gaming history. While certainly interesting to play with, how Star Fox integrates this leaves a bit to be desired, giving across a flat, numbing sensation with very little semblance of precision in its action. It's a fun addition, but didn't exactly feel like a game changer at the time. A better demonstration for the expansion was F0X. The feedback here feels a lot stronger, allowing for the same benefits demonstrated by Motocross. The edges of tracks trigger rumble, as well as an addition of collision-based feedback, a combination that takes full advantage of the pack and results in the smoothest, most responsive racing game of its time. No small feat to be sure. It wasn't at all long before haptic feedback became integral to console gaming, with a dual motor system subsequently becoming a standardised feature of big contenders. The benefits of rumble stayed strong if not strengthening even further, but the technique and architecture was seemingly at its end point. Both the PS3 and Xbox 360 demonstrated a competent understanding of how rumble should work, with satisfying and precise emulation of surfaces becoming the best showcase of potential. Games featuring vehicles, most notably racing games, were still the pinnacle of what the tech could achieve, and also did seem to be the limit at the time. So while Sony and Microsoft were pouring their efforts into perfecting their respective console implementations, what was Nintendo up to all this time? Pokemon Pinball for the Game Boy Color demonstrated the desire to add haptic feedback to more than just console games. As the name implies, it was a simple pinball game with a Pokemon paint job. But the somewhat interesting implementation of Rumble in the cartridge itself is what makes this game worth noting. Opening it up, you can see it's just a tiny little motor, but it significantly improved the feel of the game itself. Every bump resonated with a light, comfortable rumble that seemed way better than such a cheap-looking thing should provide. Playing with the rumble off after experiencing the benefits made the game seem limp and unexciting in comparison. And it's Pokemon Pinball, so it's already a great idea. Oh. 
Furthering the trend of cartridge-based rumble was the Game Boy Advance's WarriorWare Twisted, an experimental title that explores gyro as well as rumble. Oh my god! Having its core design philosophy centre around a multitude of fast minigames, the WarioWare brand was perfect to test the benefits of these technologies. You'll be spinning the Game Boy in all sorts of erratic ways and ultimately looking a bit awkward, but the mixture of haptic feedback and movement-based control created what can fondly be revered as a gem of the handhold. Prying myself away from this one actually proved quite challenging. What? Turn it upside down completely. It's a ramen timer. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for Nintendo's next attempt, which was the obscure Nintendo DS Rumble Pack. Paying homage to the N64 expansion, this small cartridge functioned by plugging it into the system's Game Boy slot. Small and oddly light, the DS Rumble Pack left a lot to be desired in performance. There weren't even many supported titles, and the feedback felt more like the DS itself was undergoing some kind of self-destruct sequence. Where the Game Boy attempts had a soft, bumping sensation, the DS has an uncomfortable buzz. There were also a lot of third-party versions that were designed to fit comfortably into the light version of the DS. Looking inside demonstrates a much weaker build quality, however, and plugging in the pack after turning the device on can lead to interesting results. <laughs> so, uh, essentially, there has been a lot of history behind Rumble. A history beyond the scope of just one video. It, it's at this point that we can analyse the here and now, and what the status quo for this technology leaves. In Sony's case, if there's a difference between the DualShock 3 and 4's haptic motors, I frankly don't know what it is. It can simulate mild to heavy rumble rather well, especially in high intensity environments, but seems to fall short when attempting anything with subtlety. Scenarios requiring lesser but still apparent vibration. The heavy attacks of Bloodborne could have really benefited from a slight vibration when fully charged. Just a little extra sprinkle of feedback to make a satisfying mechanic even more rewarding. So where the PlayStation 4 took a path towards adding more tech to its gamepad, a surprising amount of effort was made towards the Xbox One controller and its own rumble features. Yep. And what we did is we took these motors, we shrunk them, mm -hmm. and added, made a similar ones, tiny ones, inside the trigger the itself. And essentially what it does is it changes the way gamers perceive games. The controller had the now standardized dual motors for the grips, but also opted to implement two more for the triggers specifically. While not every game would utilize this, one incredible showcase was found in the new Forza games. Turn 10 Studios utilized these additional motors by adding increased feedback depth upon accelerating or braking, providing precise vibration in each respective trigger. The smooth terrain provides an almost massage-like vibration which, along with the acceleration trigger, creates an incredible sensory experience. It's a really smart move given how important the triggers are for not just racing games, but shooters and sports titles, some of the biggest sellers the industry has to offer. Gears of War 4 uses this extra function to give increased feedback on some weapons, with huge turrets greatly shaking the trigger, and submachine guns providing the sensation of light recoil. These little details add another level of immersion entirely. Mario Kart! Never one to sit on its laurels, Nintendo also set its sights on further innovation in the haptic feedback realm, opting to include what they would call HD Rumble in its Nintendo Switch console. Questionable name aside, the new technology would, as demonstrated, have the precision and quality to simulate incredibly detailed sensations. Assumedly, the theory was that haptic feedback capable of ice cube simulation would prove the further potential of Rumble to the world. It's safe to say that very few people saw this in quite the same light, and it was an aspect easily overshadowed by the Switch's primary gimmick, its ability to quite literally switch between handheld and console. None of this is to downplay the feature though, as HD Rumble has already proved its salt in a fair few titles. Rather than the use of motors, the Joy-Cons each have a complex construction of magnets and springs that provide unparalleled precision compared to the competition. Grabbing coins in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe results in an almost replicated sound, but in vibration form. 
and hitting the correct notes and turns in Fumper provides a delicious sensory reward. And the controllers have even demonstrated an ability to perform clear sound in Kirby Star Allies. From first party to indie, all manner of developers have sought out new and interesting ways to use such a versatile technology, and it marks yet another breakthrough for Nintendo when it comes to haptic feedback in gaming. Outside of the typical fare, you have Steam working with its own line of consoles and controllers, with a tactile and textured feeling trackpad that attempts to provide the best middle ground gamepad for console and PC. VR has also taken off in a big way, with so many interesting and innovative ideas, all towards making a player feel even more involved. So, what have we learned? Well, Rumble has a much more complicated and deep history than it may seem and the impacts of the technology have become easy to forget despite the benefits. It's a lot like breathing. When done well, the vibration fits seamlessly into the game and becomes harder to consciously recognize. You only really realize when it's pointed out to you. When a game like Berserk Band of the Hawk releases on PC without any support for Rumble, every heavy violent swing of Guts' sword ends up feeling limp, like a knife through butter. The raw impact of the weapon ends up coming across as a tepid smack. One man versus an army of water balloons. Equally, while the punch-ups of Arkham games feel excellent with Rumble, the decision to implement it in cutscenes completely takes the player out of the moment. The technology definitely works a lot better when triggered by a player rather than the game. It's never a good idea to remind the user that they're just holding a controller in their hand. Simulation of texture roughness, a light or heavy collision, weapon kicks, explosions, turbulence, all of these capabilities add an unbelievable amount of sensory feedback to the player, even if they don't quite realise it. So going forward, what can we expect? Well, with the direction we've seen so far, it wouldn't be surprising if Nintendo decides to push new ways to implement HD Rumble. Microsoft have something good with the Xbox One controller, and I'd be curious to see if they could do something similar to HD Rumble for the triggers. Sony, on the other hand, can hopefully put something out with a bit more to talk about. The motor system used for the last decade or so does get the job done, but as a constantly evolving industry, I would certainly expect a trick up their sleeves. Maybe even feedback via the criminally underused touchpad panel. For now though, we've run out of time, and the merits and future of Rumble are something worth more discussion later down the line. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to comment with things we could have missed. This has been Ollie for Reset Button, have a great day.